hello second video of the night um this is me making my july releases book haul video um just made my july reads wrap up video hopefully that one post first because i'm posting them at the same time with my luck this one will end up posting before that one either way um let's get started first book that came out was um songs of the forever rains now this came out on july 1st um and look how absolutely pretty this is i also got a really cool pen pre-order for this and that was really nice that's super pretty um but this was by ej Mello. and let's see beware when the songbird sings the thief kingdom is a place hidden within the world of adelar many whispers of it is of its existence but few found, have found this place where magic and pleasure abound there the mysterious thief king reigns supreme with the help of the Masao, Masai, a trio of revered and feared sorcerers larkira bassett may be the youngest of the mouse but when she sings her voice has the power to slay monsters when it's discovered the luke of D lachlan is siphoning a poisonous drug from the thief king and using it to abuse his tenants Larkira is offered her first solo mission to stop the Duke. Even to prove herself, Larkira accepts by posing as the Duke's potential bride, but her plans grow complicated when she finds herself drawn to the Lord Darius McKenna, Lachlan's rightful heir. Soon, she suspects Darius has his own motivations for ridding Lachlan of the corrupt Duke. Larkira and Darius must learn to trust each other if there is to be any hope of saving the people of Lachlan and themselves. Welcome to the world of Audelier, Audelar. Where lords and ladies can be murderers and thieves, and the most alluring notes are often the deadliest. Dare to listen? So this sounds super exciting, and I'm sorry if I like regularly butchered names. The great thing about like reading is you don't have to say names out loud, because I know that sometimes my pronunciation can be completely off. Um, but that came out July first. Now this is the week of July sixth that I'll be showing. So what we devoured by Lindsay Miller, I own like two books by this author, and <laughs> I was so disappointed that this was only available in paperback because I have her other two books in hardbacks. But I was so excited for this, and look at how beautiful this is. If you can't tame your demons, set them free. Sometimes you have to bite the hand that feeds you. Lorena Adler has a secret. She holds the power of the banished gods, the noble and the vile, inside her. She has hidden her entire life, both from the world and from her past. She is content to post, spend her days as an undertaker in a small town, marry her best friend Julian, and, ha and live an unfilling life so long as no one uncovers her true nature. But when the notoriously bloodthirsty crown prince comes to arrest Julian's father, he immediately recognizes Lorena for what she is. So she makes a deal, a fair trial for her betrothed father in exchange for his service to the crown. The prince is desperate for her help. He spent years trying to repair the weakening door that holds back the vial, and he's losing the battle. As Lorena learns more about the door and the horrifying price it takes to keep it closed, she has to embrace both parts of herself to survive. That, can you just imagine how interesting that's gonna be? I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, it's gonna be great. I, I don't know how to like express my excitement for that. Okay, now this is another one that I'm kind of really excited about. Where It All Lands by Jenny Wexler. This one was pitched as like a Sliding Doors esque book, and Sliding Doors was one of my favorite movies growing up. I had a lot of interesting favorites i don't know why like so many sad and kind of messed up movies as a child my foot is asleep but i did and i i loved sliding doors a lot um i loved it and so when i heard i don't even know anything about this but i heard that it was sliding doors esque and i was like i want it so let's see what it's about a sliding doors ex novel that reveals how our choices define us and how, no matter the road, love finds a way. Stevie Rosenstein has never made a true friend, never fallen in love, moved from city to city by her father's unrelenting job. She finds it too hard to care for someone, to trust in anything. The pain of leaving always hurts too much, but she'll soon learn to trust, to love. Twice. 
Drew and Shane have been best friends through everything. The painful death of Shane's dad, the bitter separation of Drew's parents, through sleepaway camps and family heartaches, basketball games, and immeasurable losses, they've always been there for each other. When Stevie meets Drew and Shane, life should go on as normal. But a simple coin toss alters the course of their year in profound and unexpected ways. All right. I'm so curious. I have no idea how this is going to go. I have no idea what that means. I. <laughs> Look at that. I also I, my pre-order incentive came for this the other day, which was a lucky penny on the um string and a bookmark and a sign book plate, which I need to put in here. But I'm curious. Um, okay, we're gonna see where that goes. Next, we have six crimson crane, six crimson cranes by Elizabeth Lim, and I'm pretty sure she has a popular series um that i don't own yes spin the dawn and unravel the dusk i need those two books um i see them but i only ever see them in bookstores and paperback and that's not what i want at all but let's see what this one is about i this is one of the many books that i got just because i was like you know what that that looks cool there's an itched bird on it so I think that's cool. Let me look at the inside of this other book real quick. Because I didn't do that yet. Okay, it's not that special. But yes, the Six Crimson Cranes. A princess in exile. A shape-shifting dragon. Six enchanted cranes. And an unspeakable curse. It will take more than magic to find their way home. The only princess of Kiata has a secret. Forbidden magic runs through her veins. Normally, she conceals it well, but on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, Shiori loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, forestalling the wedding she never wanted. But it also catches the attention of Reikama, her stepmother. Or sorceress in her own right, Reikama banishes the young princess, turning her betrothed brothers into cranes. She warns Shiori that she must speak of it to no one, for with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shiori can set the kingdom to rights, but to do so, she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to forswear, no matter what the cost. That sounds like it's going to be really interesting, and it makes me think of um, this fan fiction I read between... Steve and Thor and I don't know if like there I feel like this was probably like an, another story that this could be based off of and I think the soul is that fan fiction when the fan fiction like Loki being Loki um turned Steve's brothers and sister into um ducks or swans or whatever and he couldn't tell anyone or they like in the longer went on the more duck like they'd become and a whole bunch of stuff happens i don't fully remember what happens but you know it was interesting and so i think this is going to be really interesting um i would think it's funny when they like try so hard to like not be with one person and then ends up being with that person so I'm, i guess we'll see where that goes now this one is another book that i'm super excited about because i have the, leah johnson's other book which was you should see me in a crown and so this is rise to the sun um three days two girls one life-changing music festival olivia is an expert at falling in love and at being dumped but after the fallout from her last breakup has left her an outcast at school and at home she's determined to turn over a new leaf a crush-free weekend at farmland music and arts festival with her best friend is just what she needs to get her mind off the senior year that awaits her tony is one week away from starting college and it's the last place she wants to be unsure about who she wants to become and still reeling in the wake of the loss of her musician turned roadie father she's heading back to the music festival that changed her life his life in hopes that following in his footsteps will help her find her own way for it when the two arrive at farmland the last thing they expect is to realize that they'll need to join forces in order to get what they're searching for out of the weekend 
As they work together, the festival becomes so much more complicated than they bargained for. Olivia and Tony will find that they need each other in music more than they ever could have imagined. So, yeah. Um, I'm really curious to find out what happens. Um, I've never been to a music festival. I've never been to a concert at all. So, maybe this will be as close as I ever get to it. Um, but obviously it's gay. Um, as well as for the book, You Should See Me in a Crown. And they say it's about, um, grief, love, and the remarkable power of music to heal and connect us all. And I love music. And I do. Music has helped me through so much, especially in high school. So I'm really excited to see how music helps them. Ooh, so the this next one. The Queen Will Betray You by Sarah Henning. Henning. Um, it's, it's a sequel to The Princess Will Save You. Yeah, and I'm not sure where my copy is. I feel like, I don't know where my copy is. But this is a sequel to it. And I don't know how to describe this without, I don't want to read the um, summary to you without, in case it spoils um the first book but it's a sequel and i would 100 percent recommend going to check out the sequel i mean the first book i'm sorry the princess will save you um i haven't read it myself but i'm super excited too i'm pretty sure this was a duology and I don't read incomplete series as I've probably stated a million times now. I know that must be annoying. But when I read it, of course, I'll let you know. The next book is It Ends in Fire by Andrew Schwartz. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, but it was published by James Patterson. Um, he publishes so many books. I showed y'all a book last month, I'm pretty sure that well in June that he also published i have so many of his published books it's crazy but this is it ends in fire and the back says blackwater academy is a true seat of power in the republic of morovia maybe in the world where entire generations are molded into a powerful unbuilding uncompromising aristocracy blackwater academy is where wizards are made and i'm coming for every last one of them okay alka shirazi is on a mission infiltrate blackwater academy Won the great game, burned the wizard society to the ground. As a child, Aqua witnessed her parents' brutal murder at the hands of wizards before she was taken in by an underground rebel group. Now, Aqua is deep undercover at the most prestigious school of magic in the Republic, Blackwater Academy, a place where status is everything, where decadent galas end in blood splattered duels, where every student has their own agenda. To survive, Alka will have to lie, cheat, kill, and use every trick in her spy's toolkit. And for the first time in her life, the fiercely independent Alka will have to make friends in order to recruit the misfits and the outcasts into her motley rebellion. But even, even as she draws closer to victory, to vengeance, she seeks deeper into danger as suspicious professors and murderous rivals seek the traitor in their midst, and dark revelations unravel her resolve. Can Alka destroy the twisted game without becoming a part of it? It makes me think of you, the die hero, live yourself, see your, live long enough to see yourself become a villain, um, and then you become the thing you wish to destroy. I, they came to learn, she came to burn. I love that. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that tattoo one day. Um, he's always finding the best books to publish so i know this is going to be good um next up we have this is okay yes the sword stone table old legends new voices um i'm pretty sure this is an anthology yes from the vast lore surrounding King Arthur Camelot and the Knights of the Round Table comes an anthology with gender bent, race bent, LGBTQIA plus inclusive retellings. Um, I don't recognize any of these author names. Oh, I recognize Sylvia Marino Garcia. 
but I don't recognize anybody else. But I thought this, I don't even remember what made me get this, but I thought this would be really, really cool. And I've been, so many more author retellings have been coming out this year. And at first, like two years ago, I would have told you I don't like anthologies. But since last year, I've been getting so many anthologies. And since this is like, it has um, gender bit, LGBT, race bit, um, retelling versions of it, I was like, I need it, I want it. So I got it. Um, next up, we have Flash Fire by TJ Klune, and it is the sequel to The Extraordinaries, which I have not read yet. Um, the, be the best part about this book. Okay, I have it somewhere. I have the first book somewhere. I could have sworn it was over here, but it, I don't see it. So I guess it's not over here. But the best part about this is that it is... A reversible dust jacket now the first book the first printing also had a reversible dust jacket unfortunately i did not get it when it was in the first print so i do not have a reversible dust jacket for the first book but i don't even know where i put that first book at anyway apparently so i didn't even show it to you but yes in this world i'm pretty sure like superheroes are actually a thing and there's this character who writes fan fictions for these superheroes and then falls for one of them i think that was basically the gist of the first one and i wasn't ever gonna get the first one because i don't like when people write fan fiction based off real people and i know this is fiction um but in this world he's writing fan fiction based on real people and that just makes me uncomfy so i wasn't gonna get it but it's super popular and i've heard so many good things about it so i'm like maybe i'll read it anyway um next up is xoxo by Alex O. The funniest thing. Oh, it's not Alex. I'm sorry. Axie. Sometimes you glance at stuff and then your dyslexia just. I'm not at. Anyway. But Axie O. I. This is another book that I was not going to originally get. Um. So I don't really care for K pop. And I don't really care about books or movies where somebody falls in love with a celebrity or. Especially a pop star. So, like any movie where they're like, oh, I fell in love with this pop star. Especially, mm, them Hallmark movies, where they fall in love with a popular actor or a pop star. No, I lose interest. But I was hearing a lot of good things about it, and this cover was super, super pretty, and it was like right there, and I was like, I need it. I forgot to mention that I'm on the, the week of the 13th now. Flash Fire, and this came out on the 13th, and so did Sword Stone Table, I think. No. Yes, Sword of Stone Table, Flash Fire, and this came out on the 13th. Forgot to mention that. But yes, um, I thought it was so pretty, and I've heard a lot of good things. And once again, I'm trying to be less picky. I'm so incredibly picky. But, um, but my favorite thing about this, that I'm glad I ended up getting it and didn't like pass it up like I planned to. Look at how freaking stunning this book is like i don't what else can i tell you i this is the one book that i wouldn't mind if it didn't have a best jacket because it's so freaking beautiful without it you don't need one you just need the book absolutely stunning i anyway let me tell you what it's about what if finding the love of your life meant risking the life that you love Jenny didn't get to be an award-winning, classically trained cellist without choosing practice over fun. That is, until the night she meets Jay Wu. Mysterious, handsome, and just a little bit tormented, Jay Wu is exactly the kind of distraction Jenny would normally avoid. And yet, she finds herself pulled into spending an unforgettable evening wandering Los Angeles with him on the night before his flight home to South Korea. With Jay Wu in an ocean away, there's no use in dreaming of what could have been. But when Jenny and her mother moved to Seoul to take care of her ailing grandmother, who does Jenny meet at the elite arts academy she's just been accepted to? Jae Woo. Finding the dreamy stranger who swept you off your feet in your homeroom is one thing, but Jae Woo isn't, any, just, isn't just any student. Turns out he's a member of one of the biggest K-pop bands in the world, and like most K-pop idols, Jae Woo is strictly forbidding from dating anyone. When a relationship means not only jeopardizing her place at her dream music school, but also endangering everything Jae Woo's worked for, Jenny has to decide once and for all just how much she's willing to risk for love. 
So it sounds like it's going to be interesting. It very much sounds like not my cup of tea whatsoever. But one day, not any time soon probably, one day I'll give it a chance though. I have too many books to pr try to prioritize this one. My legs are so far asleep. It's ridiculous. I know. I can't get comfortable. I'm on the floor. I'm not on my bed. My bed's right here. This is normally, normally I'm on my bed facing this way when I make these videos. But I'm on the floor because I was doing something and I was like, I need to hear if I make these videos. And so now you see those. Um, next up is All These Warriors. This is a sequel to All These Monsters, the one book that I have next to me. Um, and I do not remember what this is about. Once again, this was something that I got because I saw was popular. How are all these warriors smaller than this one? Um, because it's like the sequel is smaller. Usually that's not how it works. Um, but let's see. Okay. So this is this is what all these monsters are about. This is the first book to all these warriors. 17-year-old Clara is ready to fight back. Fight back against her abusive father. Fight back against the only life she's ever known. And most of all, fight back against the scrabs, the earth-dwelling monsters that the world's governments are trying to keep from rampaging through cities and towns. So when an opportunity arises for Clara to join an international fight squad, she jumps at the chance. When Clara starts training with her teammates, however, she learns what fighting scrabs really means. Sore muscles, exhaustion, and worst of all, death. They are unpredictable, violent, and terrifying. But as Clara gains confidence in her battle school skills, she starts to realize scrabs might not be the biggest threat. The true monsters are the ones you least expect. Oh, my foot is in the, the tingly, needly stage. I hate this stage. Um, and then the next book is The Taking of Jake Livingston by ryan douglas and i'm pretty sure this was a debut book um but also this is obviously like main character a queer main character super happy to um get it and it's gonna be a really quick read but fear will find you that's what it says um let's see this about Living in two worlds is exhausting, and no one knows this better than 16-year-old Jake Livingston. His working-class, diverse neighborhood is a far cry from the world of St. Clair Prep, where he is one of the only black students, constantly at the mercy of racist teachers and peers who don't understand him. But when his neighbor, a survivor of grisly school shooting, is murdered and the bloody initials of the now-dead shooter, Sawyer Dune, are left on the entry wall, entryway wall of Jake's home, Jake is forced to confront in another world he wishes he could escape. The world of the dead is a medium jake sees ghosts around him all the time most are harmless stuck in their death loops as they relive their deaths over and over again they rarely interact with people and while for the most part for the most of his life jake has avoided them this time there is no running away sawyer was a troubled teen who shot and killed six kids at a local high school before taking his own life now he's a powerful vengeful ghost and he has plans for his afterlife Plans that include Jake. When Sawyer begins stalking him, high school becomes a different kind of survival game. One, Jake is not sure he can win. Once again, this is not my kind of book. And I was I almost wasn't going to get it. Um, because thrillers and things that are supposed to be scary just don't interest me. But there was something about this book. Probably because it's a black queer story that made me want it. So I got it. And ghosts. Ghosts are pretty cool, too. I like ghosts. So, <laughs> I got it. And I feel like it's going to be a good book. I feel like I'm going to like this one. I feel like I'm going to be on the edge of my seat for this one. So, that's the end for July 13th. Now, we're into July 20th. And first, we're going to show off Curses by Lish McBride. This is clearly a sleep with Beauty and the Beast retelling. So the genders are twisted so i'm pretty sure bale is the the beast is a woman and beauty is a male i think i just knew it was beauty and the beast retelling and i wanted it um a run in with the fairy godling and her betrothal ball left mary craven with more than any fairy born noble could want wealth intelligence and the kind of beastly visage that makes children weep 
Now, Merit has until her 18th birthday to break the fairy's curse, and every day she loses a little more of herself to the animal she's become, all because she picked one unsuitable boy. Tevin Dumont has nothing except for a Gary gift. I said a Gary. A fairy gift of charm, an exceptionally handsome face, and two siblings he's trying desperately to protect. As the oldest son in a family of con artists, he's learned how to use what he has to his best advantage. He'll do anything to keep his siblings safe, so when his mother runs afoul of the Beast of Crevin, Tevin doesn't think twice. He'll pay his mother's debt, even if it means taking her place. With her birthday looming, Marriott has to find a match, but she's terrified she'll make the same mistake as before. Then she meets Tevin and realizes there's no one better to protect her from an unsuitable match than the most unsuitable boy of all. Can Tevin help her break the curse, or is she doomed to be the Beast of Crevin forever? It's going to be great. It's going to be good. It's going to be interesting. Mm. I And I love this cover. I love this portrait. I also love that since um, the, the, the normal role of Belle is a male, that they also made it his mom that got that he has to trade places for instead of you know his dad my leg is still asleep next up we have these hollow vows by lexi ryan now this one is a book that i've been super excited for to come out and now it's here our heart is a dangerous thing to steal and we're going to talk about it um I could revel in the darkness. These are the hours of spies and thieves. These are my, they're my hours. Brie would do anything before making a deal with the fate. Death is preferable to their vicious schemes. But when her sister is taken by, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But when her sister is taken by the sadistic king of the unseelie court, there is nothing Brie wouldn't do to get her back, including making a deal with the king himself to steal three magical relics from this rival Seely court. Gaining unfettered access to the Seely court is easier said than done. Brie's only choice is to pose as a potential bride for Prince Ronan, the Seely prince who's not quite as wicked as she once thought. Unwilling to let her heart distract her, she accepts help from a band of unseely misfits with their own secret agenda. But as Bree spends time with their mysterious leader, Finn, she finds herself struggling to resist his seductive charm. Caught between two dangerous courts, Bree must decide who to trust her loyalty with and with her heart. Now, middle school me adored books with fays and fairies and unseely and seely courts and everything. And to have another book with this has me so excited. I'm so excited. Um... I hate when I'm sitting on this floor. Also, but I, I hate love triangles. Love triangles are so annoying. They're so annoying. If it's not going to be a throuple, what's the point? So, I'm both excited for, like, the concept and also dreading encountering the love triangle and then wondering who she's going to pick. And if I like the one she's not going to pick, I'm going to be very irritated. So, it makes me very anxious. Next up, we have Untethered, which is the sequel to Shielded, which I am dumb for not bringing next to me because I had it near me earlier and I put it up. So this is Untethered. I've been waiting to re it for a while because I've been waiting for this sequel to come out. Look at this really cool etched design in this book. Yes, since I don't have the book next to me. I can't tell you what it's about, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, but this artwork is really, really pretty. Um, and Shilded it seems like it's going to be a really, really good book. So I would 100% recommend looking up what Shilded is about. I feel like I've been waiting for this book for forever. And I wish I could express to you how long it's felt. Okay. That was... The last book of the 20th these books those three books were from the 20th however this came out july 22nd after love and i've been waiting for this i swear it felt like the release date kept getting further and further but clearly it's gay not even death will tear them apart 
car headlights. The last thing Ash hears is a snap of breaking glass as the widescreen hits her, as the windscreen hits her and shatters into a million pieces like stars. But she made it. She's still here. Or is she? This is New Year's Eve. Ash gets an invitation from the afterlife she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate. But Ash can't forget her first love, Poppy, and she would do anything to get to see her again. Even if it means they only get a few days together, dead or alive. Look at how I love this purple. I love this. It's so pretty. This is by Tanya Byrne. I had to get this from Book Depository. I don't know if it's available on Amazon now, but it wasn't available when I pre-ordered it. So I had to pre-order it from Book Depository. Um, and it's so pretty. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about these books except that I'm excited for them because that's why I got them because I'm excited for them. Anyway, now we're on the last week of books, which is July 27th. First, I'm going to show you Gods and Monsters by Shelby Marin. Maherin. Um, This is the third book to the Serpents and Dove series. I'm pretty sure this is the last book, or at least I hope it's the last book. There may be a fourth book, but I, I really hope this is the last book because I want to read this series and I don't want to wait for another book to come out. Um, But yeah, the first book is Serpent and Dove and the second book is Blood and Honey. And this is the third one. And it's so thick. Uh -huh. It's so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. Um, then this one is The River Has Teeth by Erica Waters. She wrote the Ghost Woods song. I keep forgetting that. I haven't read that yet and I need to. Um, one Girl Fueled by Rage, Another by Magic. This place makes monsters of us all, but maybe that's what it takes to survive. Natasha's sister is missing. Her ear was found abandoned at the edge of a local nature preserve known as the Bend. But as the case grows cold, Natasha's loss turns to a burning anger. She'll do anything to find answers. Della's family has a channeled magic from the Bend for generations, providing spells for the desperate. But when Natasha appears on her doorstep, Della knows it will take more than simple potions to help her. But Della has her own secrets to hide because Della thinks she knows the beast who is responsible for the disappearance, her own mother, who has turned into a terrible monster by magic gone wrong. Natasha is angry. Della has little to lose. They are each other's only hope. This is going to be gay. <laughs> I love an angry woman. I love the beast. And of course, this is another story about grief and the power of anger and love. Um, it's going to be creepy, but I'm excited. Um, There's two more books left for this video, I believe. Um, when We Were Frangers by Alex Richards, I found that there's been a lot of variations of Alex or Alex's books that I've been getting recently. But I don't know, there's been this obsession with the, the, the reason that I even wanted this was solely because there's been this obsession that I have with the idea of strangers. I wanted to write a book somehow about strangers, dear strangers, or people who once knew each other and became strangers. They go from strangers to like, well, no, people to strangers. It's just, I've had this obsession for the last couple of years. And so when we were strangers, I was like, I need it. So one day I want to write a book about being strangers. Um... Or at least a poem or something. But also, from what I remember, the description of this book is a little messed up. So let's talk about it. How far would you go to unravel the truth? 17-year-old Evie Parker is devastated in the wake of her father's sudden death. But she knows something her mother doesn't. The day of his heart attack, her dad was planning to move out. After finding his packed bag, she impulsively put everything away to spare her mom more heartache. To make matters worse, Evie soon learns the reason for her father the reason her father was going to leave. He had been dating his twenty two year old receptionist Bree, who is now six months pregnant with his child, Evie's half sibling. Desperate to distract herself, Evie signs up for a summer photography class where she meets a motley crew of students, including quirky and adorable Declan. Still, Evie can't stop thinking about the other woman. 
Armed with a telephoto lens, she caves into her curiosity, and what starts as a little bit of spying on Bree quickly turns into an obsession. Then, when an emergency forces Evie to help Bree, she learns there's more to the story than she ever knew. This cover is also really pretty. I love this blue purple. And you know what? The first time I looked at it, I didn't even realize it was a woman in the camera that she, that of Brie until I was looking at this in the camera now. I don't know what I would do in this situation. I would just n pretend like Brie didn't exist. I would never be. I have too much anxiety to try to handle situations like that. It just wouldn't happen. Anyway, last but not least, Red Wolf by Rachel Vincent. Um, I just realized I've been forgetting to tell you the titles for a couple of these books. I mean, not the titles, the, the authors. Um, but Rachel Vincent. The back of this is also really cool. Beware the Wolf. Um, so, obviously, Red Writing Z Telling, which I was super excited for. Um, especially since I got one last month called For the Wolf. Um, so this one I'm especially excited about. Let me explain to you why. For as long as 16-year-old Adele can remember, the village of Oakvale has been surrounded by the dark wood, a forest filled with terrible monsters, a forest that light cannot penetrate. Like her fellow villagers, she knows to steer clear of the woods unless absolutely necessary. But unlike her neighbors, Adele has a very good reason for going into the dark wood. Adele is one of a long line of guardians, women who secretly take on the form of a wolf in order to protect their village. Her life and the lives of every villager she watches over depends on, upon her secret being kept. But when accepting her fate means giving up the boy she loves, abandoning the future she imagined for herself, and breaking her own moral code, she must decide how far she is willing to go to keep her neighbor safe. Beware the wolf. It's going to be great. Um... it'll be great i like it's like peter darling where um wendy is peter or so for red riding hood red riding hood to be the wolf i i love when that happens when they're one in the same so and i love red riding hood to an extent i only really care about the read twit links because they're always really cool i don't care about i don't care about the original story i speak so fast that i it doesn't sound right when I speak. Um, but I rarely care about the original stories. I just love what you can do with a retelling. So I love Red Riding Hood retellings. But um, yes, I believe those are all the books that came out this month. There is a special one that I want to show off, though. It's you. If you watched the Owl Crate unboxing video, then you would have seen it. But it's this Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. And now... Uh, I think I mentioned this book in my June release video, um, but I didn't have it yet because it was Al Crate's July book, um, and obviously, and it only got here a few days ago. But this is the the Al Crate cover for it. This is the original cover, and it's absolutely stunning, and that's absolutely stunning, and it's an exclusive reversible dust jacket which is absolutely stunning i just needed to show this off if july's rainbow crate box were here already i'd also show off gear breakers because that was another june book that came out at the end of june that i don't remember if i mentioned but i didn't have yet because it was supposed to be in Ju rainbow crates july box but that's still not here yet um but i will whenever that gets here i do an unboxing for it so you're gonna end up seeing it anyway but yes um that is all I have to show you, I think. I hope so. If not, I can always show you later. Um, but thanks for watching. If you watch this long, see you next time. Peace.